So studio visits, that's what we're going to talk about today. Studio visits. Ooh. Yes, we will lure them in. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artists. So today we are going to talk about doing studio visits and what it is that we do, our best practices. Which usually for me, because I'm neurotic, entails like cleaning the bathroom thoroughly. and Yeah, like cleaning the toilet 15 times. That's what Klee does before no, people come over. Just one really good time. So today we are answering a question about portfolios and about studio visits. Yes, indeed. And our question comes from Chantel Carey. Hi, Chantel. Hi, Chantel. Do you have a video on your portfolio that you would show during a portfolio visit? What's the proper way to do an open studio, studio visit, or portfolio visit from your house or apartment? So many questions, Chantel. But all surrounding the same thing. So little time. What kind of artwork I have in my portfolio all depends on who it is that I'm meeting and what it is that I think that they're looking for. A lot of times before I do a portfolio meeting with somebody, I will discuss the parameters of what it is that they're expecting, what it is that they want, and then I select artwork that falls within those parameters and then I meet with them. The very first time that I had a meeting with somebody where I was bringing in my portfolio, it was for Coco Design, one of the places downtown. And it was my very first time, and I put together a booklet with over a hundred paintings in it, and that was just super overwhelming. Like, they got there, and it was just this mismatch of all these different styles and different uh, series that I do. There was nothing specific in there, and as it turns out, they just wanted some pieces that were based on instruments. Had I asked them that question beforehand, I could have put together something that was more relevant to them with way less pieces for them to try and navigate. That's true. You were like, greetings, would you like to spend the next four hours perusing my entire collection? And they were like, can you just do a banjo? Yeah. He looked at my portfolio, opened it, you could see the overwhelm in his body, and he was like, so this is what I want. And he put my portfolio down and didn't even look at it. So your portfolio should be put together specifically for that client. Unless you have a basic portfolio where you just have a certain collection of your series, and then I would keep that down to maybe about four per series just so that you can show off the series but like a blanket portfolio yeah blanket portfolio a that's portfolio of the various blankets portfolio that covers a little bit of everything a blanket portfolio you may want that for standard but honestly I found the most success when I'm using a portfolio if it is specifically tailored to the person that I'm meeting with. You want to set it up where you are having a relevant conversation and you're not having to straggle through a minefield of, of just a bunch of different things. So yeah, keep it simple. I like to send people to my online shop as a precursor too, just so they can get an idea. I would say that that would be more so coming from a place where maybe they don't know what your art looks like. They just know that you're an artist. And in that case, yeah, it'd be easy to send them to your store and they could look at your online store and see the kind of stuff that you create. But if they already know you and they like your artwork, um, I would have that. I would definitely have that conversation with them first before meeting them. Either way, I would have that conversation anyway. You're like, what do you want? What do you want from me? Time is money. <laughs> so the next part of the question was doing a portfolio studio visit. What's so? the proper way to do an open studio, a studio visit, or a portfolio visit from your house? So a portfolio visit from your house would be the same kind of portfolio visit that you would do meeting somebody at their house. Uh, so same tactics that I talked about with your portfolio. If you're doing a studio visit, then what I recommend is that you make your place as uninviting and uh, scary as possible so that so that you can intimidate them into purchasing multiple pieces yes <laughs> don't do that. that that was not good advice what i would consider is a few things when it comes to a studio visit number one to me one of the most important things is parking making sure that this person has a place to park there are a lot of artists that set up a studio visit and don't concern themselves with that and honestly parking could be one of the biggest pains in the butt when it goes to visiting somebody you want it to be as convenient as possible for the person that's coming to visit you make sure that you lay out a very clear outline of exactly where it is that they need to go and where it is that they need to meet you if there's difficulty with that a lot of times i just meet people downtown for a 
cafe visit and bring my portfolio or bring whatever notes it is that I need to bring to talk to them. I also don't just invite anybody into my studio because my studio is my home. Uh, if I'm not getting a good vibe or I don't really know that person, I don't really invite them into my home. Yeah, that's true. That's when we're like, we'll meet you on neutral ground. Yeah, we'll meet you on neutral ground in a parking lot somewhere where we always look suspicious because we're in a parking lot trading goods. Yes. For yeah. money. <laughs> but if you do set up a studio visit, what I suggest is having a way to be able to bring your artwork out. And honestly, you got to make do with what you have in the room that you have. For me, I don't have a wall here where I'm able to display my art. A lot of studios have their workspace and then they have a big massive wall where they're able to put their artwork up so that when people come and visit the studio, there's a wall displaying their artwork. So because we don't have the room for that here, what I'll do when I know that somebody is coming by is that I will set up pieces in the easels in the studio that are already done. Any works of art that I'm temporarily working on, I will take down. And sometimes I will set up some additional easel stands on the tables and bring out the pieces that are more relevant to them. I have no problem with them sitting there and me rushing back and forth and bringing out paintings and showing them. What happens with me is that I get super excited that I almost have to keep myself from pulling everything out because I'm like, oh, you like that piece? Check this out. This is cool, isn't it? And I forget that they're there to buy something. I, it's almost like it becomes like this show and tell in school. And I'm like, yeah, look at this piece. Then we were both five and I was like, ooh, I haven't seen this one for a long time. Yeah, Can I yeah. have that? A lot of times there are pieces that I forget that I had and I get super excited. And once I find something, I'm like, oh my God, check this out. Then I'm like, there's got to be more. I think that that excitement actually is what becomes contagious when people come over because I'm so excited to go through my art that they're excited to go through the art. For us, our studio visits are very casual. There are a lot of times where our collectors come over and they're just hanging out. And yes, we are showing them the artwork and yes, we're having conversations with them about the artwork. But mostly we're asking them about them and how their day was or how their year has been going. And we just kind of catch up with them. So it's it's very laid back and it's very fun. It's just a visit. That's all it is. Especially when you have collectors that are like your collectors and your peeps. Uh, pretty much it's like having a friend come by and just hang out for an hour or so. Now, if it's someone who's never been to your studio before, then the fundamentals, let them know where they can sit comfortably or if they're standing to see the art. Offer them a beverage. Most of the time we remember to do that. Yeah, most of the, no, no. I would say most of the time we forget to do that until later on and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't even offer you water. Yeah, we're not, we're not great hosts. No. I would say I'm very much BYOB, bring your own butt. We do not provide butts <laughs> here in the studio. And again, I don't just invite anybody into our studio. When somebody makes an appointment, I uh, I do Facebook stalk them. I, I just I don't want a serial killer coming over into my house. Yeah, that's not preferable. I sound so paranoid. You don't have the first date at your house. You you go out somewhere and meet them. Yeah, that way if you're like, oh, you have forty two ferrets. Hmm. <laughs> For the most part, when I do studio visits, this is somebody that I've already met somewhere out, either at the market or we schedule a visit downtown at one of the cafes. Most of the time when somebody's first visit to the studio, we've already met them at least two or three times before they come by the studio. That's my own rule of thumb because, like I said, our home is our workspace. So inviting somebody into our home, we uh, they, they got to be vetted. I recommend choosing a spot that's centrally located in your town to be able to meet with customers if you don't already have one. And as far as how to have a studio visit, honestly, that's all up to you and what your aesthetic is. They're there to talk to you. They're there to see your art. They're there to visit the amazing thing that is an art studio. Not everybody gets to go into an art studio every single day. So that in of itself should be a lot of fun for them. That's true. Most of the people that come in here for the first time are so busy going, oh, what? The way I would look at it is just treat it like a friend is coming over and you are going to share some artwork with them and give them a tour of your studio and just hang out and have a good time and have conversation. Above all, make sure that you feel comfortable because if you feel comfortable, then your energy and your space is going to feel comfortable. Exactly. And just think about what you would want 
if you were going to somebody's place to see their stuff. Yeah. All right, Chantel, hopefully we answered that question for you in a satisfactory manner. Yes, hopefully it was satisfactory. <laughs> That's how we like to say goodbye to our guests. Hopefully your visit was satisfactory. <laughs> and by the way, you guys, we have a vlog channel that will show up here somewhere at one of the end screens and most likely at some point we'll be filming a studio visit and we film a lot of our adventures that we have during the day even boring stuff like going and doing uh, inventory in different places but you get to hang out with us a little bit more if that's what you want to do and if you guys have any questions for us just leave them in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching you guys you guys are absolutely freaking amazing I totally adore you and if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.